All right, let's take a look at this video here. We're going to kind of cover a few things in here I think are neat to put into perspective for you. Uh, shooting, don't shooting, different animal behaviors, that kind of thing. So the scenario here is um, I'm hunting a, a, a white oaks that are still pretty hot. Now, they're pretty much done. Droppings almost over. Um, and what I, I did here is I came into this area. It's kind of this one square mile area of select cutting here. You can see uh, there's a power line up here in the background. And I had covered, I walked this whole thing that day and since 11 o'clock in the afternoon in the rain. And uh, basically I narrowed it down to these few trees, this tree, this tree, this tree here, the tree here, the one I'm in, and the one over here are whites that are still not dropping, but they're still greener than other ones. And it looks like there's got the best odds. A lot of poop was on the ground. I found a lot of signs still. I thought of anywhere in this area, these would be the first one they hit when they come out of bedding, which would be on the other side of here. I was expecting to come right up through this finger into here or right up through over here or right up behind me. Now, as you can see, we got four does coming into here. Okay, right up here where my cursor is, there's four does, one behind a tree, I think, but there's four of them here that are working their way, came right up out of there and they're coming right this direction. <coughs> Excuse me. There's also another doe, a yearling doe that is behind me, like 30 yards behind me in a kind of this thicker stuff like you're seeing here where I'm moving my cursor back and forth. Some of that stuff is right behind me and she is or that, that little yearling doe is right in the back behind me. <coughs> Hang on. <coughs> Sorry. Um, so she's in that stuff behind me. These four deer are working towards me. Now the wind direction is going almost like where my arrow is pointing. The wind is kind of going on this direction right over here, coming from me and working up in this direction here, which is what I was anticipating it would be doing and what I was hoping it'd be doing and because I expect the travel to be through here. The tree I'm actually in is a white oak. It's very similar to this exact type setup that here in the middle where my cursor is. You can see it here. And I'm kind of up and tucked into a spot like this right up here. So that's a very similar type of tree where I'm at. And it's also kind of open like these are here. But I'm up in a tree this way about 18 feet up, 18, 19 feet up. And we are set up. Now another thing to note on here. This trail that we see that runs through here, right through here, you can see this trail. You'll see it better later on. That trail is 20 yards away from me, okay? This trail that you're seeing go right up through here where my cursor is, the white moving on there, that is a 20-yard trail to me to right here is 20 yards right along this path. <clears throat> Sorry. Now, with that said, we're going to go ahead and play this, let these animals come in. We're going to talk a little bit about some of this stuff. Here they come. You can see them. They're starting to move in. Okay. Now, when they get in a little closer here, I'm looking, I'm watching it. Now, this is me looking behind me. That one behind me is right in here, somewhere right in this area. And I'm looking to see if I can see where she is. But she's somewhere behind me. It's a yearling. I look back at these ones. And I'm realizing, okay, here we got, they're up here in this upper area, the middle of the screen. I'm realizing we got two adult does and two yearling does are what we have actually coming into me. So I'm getting pretty excited. Now, I've been out in the rain all day. You will notice my bow shaking. I'm doing the best I can to keep it from shaking, but I've been out since 11 o'clock, and the temperatures are in the mid-30s, and it's uh, about an 8, 9-mile-an-hour consistent wind, and it's been raining all day. It's cold, and I'm, I'm froze. Um, but you can see these deer working their way in, eating their way into me coming this way. And again, keep in mind, again, my wind is going this direction over here. This is what my wind is doing. Now, also, I'm going to pause this for a second. Now, remember, I had said that I had walked all over here to see what would be the best place to set up in here. Okay, I haven't been in, I have not hunted this spot before. Honestly speaking, I would never hunt a place like this if it wasn't for the white oaks. I would never hunt something so open in this kind of a scenario. But the trees were what pulled me into there was because of these, these white oaks. Now, when I came in to pick these trees... I walked up through here, was looking at all the sign, and I made circles around this area here. I checked all this out, looking for droppings, looking for stuff between all these trees that I was telling you about, 
as I came into here spot checking this and trying to determine because I had already kind of from here picked and said this tree here is probably going to be my best bet for that wind direction to keep my wind out of these trees and to give me shooting in this area. This is where I actually thought shooting would, I was hoping shooting would be, is over in somewhere in this particular area is what I was going for. They'd come out of there, come up this way, come into here or come through, and they'd end up in here is what I was hoping for. As, as it turned out, we ended up coming up this way, but so you get a feel, but I have walked all over in here. So my ground scent is in there. So these deer come in, they start working by. We're going to talk about some shooting opportunities. We're going to talk about a whole bunch of things in here. Uh, it's a perfect example to be able to display it. Now, notice how these deer are kind of hanging up right here. You saw how quick they were to come from there over to here, but now they're hanging up a little bit. Okay, remember, I told you I had walked through here. So somewhere in this area, they're picking up my ground scent. It's here. You know, they're not eating nothing there. They're they're checking things out and seeing what's what. You got one, two, three, and then you got this other one coming up over here. Coming right through the back right here. So as I'm seeing them, I got a big doe here, a big doe there, two smaller does here. Now, I don't want to shoot one of the yearlings. You know, if I got, I mean, don't don't get me wrong. I'll shoot yearlings all day long. I don't mind that at all. But I have bigger deer here. I want to take advantage of the bigger deer. But notice how they're kind of stopping in this area. They're not moving. Notice how heads over here are up. Either paying attention to something. They're just not quite sure. You can hear the wind. Yearling doesn't really care too much about what's going on. Now, is that a shot right there that I could take? Okay, we said that this is a 20-yard trail right here. Coming right in. This is 20 yards from me. He's right on that 20-yard trail, probably at about 22, 23 yards. But that angle is horrible. Okay, but it is one of the bigger deer. You got another bigger one there. But that angle is absolutely horrible. Um, that's quartering too. I would never take that shot and I'm not happy with that. And I don't even like broadside. Um, I have my own reasons for that, my own opinions, but I don't, I, I prefer a quartering away shot. I don't like broadside and I sure in a heck would never take a quartering two angle like that personally. So let's let them move around a little bit get a feel for stuff, see what's going on trying to figure out what they're going to do, where they're going to go, what's going to happen. Is that a shot there? A little alert, but when that head goes down again, now we're almost getting to a broadside shot. So there's a lot of people that would take that 22-yard shot, 22, 23 yards, somewhere in that neighborhood. There's a lot of people that take that. Not me. It's not, not my, uh, it's not high enough percentage for me. I'm not interested in it. Let's always deer start moving around some more. What about that shot? No way. It's quartering two. Not taking it. What about that shot? Getting a little better, but still quartering two. Now it's at this moment here that I realize I want the big deer. I want the big one. Okay, we got two smalls, we got a medium, and we got a big one. I want the big one. That's my attitude. I'm like, I'm holding out kind of for that big one. So they keep working, but notice there, there's that this one here especially, right here. See that nose stuck out, sniffing? She knows that I've been through here. She is smelling me. She knows that, that I have been in this area walking around. Notice how she's got her ears cocked in different directions. Notice how she's looking around. Of all these deer, she's the one that's actually kind of being alert. Like something here, you know, I, I'm not sure. There, I'm smelling somebody here um, that has been here at some time. Now, keep in mind, it's been four hours since I got up here. But she smells that I was in here and that somebody was there. So she's kind of got a little alertness to her 
where the other ones are still oblivious to any of that. This is the deer that has my attention. This is the one I'm focusing on uh, due to sheer size. Watch this demeanor of this deer. Watch the, watch, she is, as we back that up to where she just sniffs me, right there, she's sniffing the ground where I walked. Watch how her demeanor changes and watch what she, how she goes into kind of alert and searching mode. Look at her. See how she's just panning, scanning, sniffing. Something's not right. Not quite sure. Got to figure it out. Now, what about this shot? <clears throat> do we have a shot here? Well, yes, we do. Most definitely do. Okay, that's not a bad thing. Now, again, it's it's almost it's broadside slightly. I, I'm going to call that broadside, but I don't like broadside, and I don't like broadside at distance, and I want the other deer. Now, this would not be horrible. Like I said, there's a lot of people who take the shot, and if I wanted to shoot that deer, I would probably be okay getting ready to shoot this deer as soon as that head wasn't looking this way. But remember, we got to watch four different heads here. Okay, we got four deer and four sets of eyes, and we are in a tree like this one up over here, up in the upper left corner. We are right there and pretty exposed. We got to be careful of any kind of movement and things like that that can bust us. And actually, you'll notice in a second here, as this deer starts to kind of get into the way I want it to be for a shot, you're going to notice me start getting my bow ready where I'm still half tempted. I haven't completely committed to not shooting this deer, waiting on this one. Now, I really want this one, but I have not ruled out the fact that if I get the right one, I might just take it on here. And you'll see that when you watch what this deer does and watch what I do with my bow. See how I'm moving my bow, getting it into position? See how that deer is still alert? Look at, paying attention. Now watch me with my, see, oh, look, it's like maybe, and I, I don't, but notice how perfect of a shot that is. Okay, we're at about 18 yards. Right there is good. As soon as that head moves, this one's not paying attention. This one's not paying attention. This one over here is not paying attention. It's kind of my world here. Like, I own her. Uh, matter of fact, if you watch my finger on my bow, pretty quickly, I'm about to pull that, or I'm over my arrow. I'm going to pull that off here pretty quick again, almost making a decision to shoot her. Probably right when that head goes down. Now, I'll tell you what's going on here. We'll back that up a little bit. Watch her do that foot stomp, okay? She is catching my wind. Right here, she is. She's there. Remember, I told you that wind. We, we've kind of rolled the, my my GoPro here a little bit, but that wind is going this direction. She just caught a little glimpse of it. Something just hit her nostril, lit her up a little bit, and she knows that something's not quite right. She's going to give a foot stomp. She's going to look around hard, but it was just a, just a little hint of it. So she's not a hundred percent sure and not that super worried about it yet. But watch, as soon as I get a, a almost go ahead from that, and I get the tail flick. I'm taking my finger off, almost like taking the safety off, and I'm kind of getting ready that I may just shoot her. Watch this foot stomp. Okay, they all look. They're alert. Why did you do that? What's going on? See how they're all paying attention? She's still sniffing where I was. She's doing this fake head bob. Notice this head bob, this fake Fake you out, put her head down, pick it back up, watch, okay, as she does this. Here comes the foot stomp, and then right afterwards, she's going to notice, too, when she stomps her foot, all the other deer look at her. They want to know what, or look in that direction. They're wondering why she did that. Her stomping that foot was the same with that somebody going, hey, 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 listen, look, guys, look, look. Okay, well, that's what she did. She stomps that foot. And then she does this fake head bob like she's going to eat, but she's not. She's really looking, and she's kind of glancing. She's going to pick her head right back up quick. Watch. Foot stomp. Look. All the deer look at her. You know, what's going on? Why? Now look at her. See her fake this bob? See her fake this? See that? That's fake. That's her looking around trying to figure things out. She's going to give a little tail wag and say, see, my finger just came off the bow. Now I'm like, all right, I might just shoot her. And I could have right, you know, I mean, I had it right here. Would have been my shot if I wanted it. It would have been as soon as it right there. That's where you can even see me tense the string a little bit. I changed my mind. They're heading this way. They're doing okay. And I want this one. So I choose not to shoot her. 
Would have been a good shot, like I said, 18 yards. There's that 20-yard trail right behind her, you know, in there. So she's about 18 yards out, not looking at me, slight quartering away, win-win, perfect, put it right there, game over, uh, and Sally's your mother kind of deal, you know, problem solved. But I want this one. This one's bigger. And I, I just, that's the one I'm focusing on. So I do not shoot. You can see I just let it let it go, kind of chill out for a second. But now things start to take a little bit of a twist. She did not go up this way, was what I expected her to do, to keep going right around this edge. By the way, her demeanor was kind of like what this one looks like it's going to do. But she's not. She's now going over here. So now things are getting a little weird and a little hairy. Um, we got a little or deer here. That offers me shots as well too, but I'm not interested. Again, I want this one, and I'm kind of stubborn and set on it. But now watch as she starts to move, okay? Notice this one is looking at her like, why are you now going this way? We were going this way, and now you're going this way. Why are you doing that? Then she's going to do this nervous high-stepping stuff that grabs everybody's attention and kind of makes them go, what, what is going on with this chick Lucy over here? What is it she knows that we don't? Okay, all these deer are kind of minding her own business. She's wondering what she's doing, but watch when she starts high-stepping here. There's that shot if I wanted it right there. Thump, if I wanted it, one of the yearlings. Okay, safe, secure shot. See, there's a tail flick from this one. It just happens, and everything's okay. I'm excited because she's coming my direction. It makes me happy. These two aren't bothering me any. As long as nothing gets over here, I'm safe wind-wise. There's a tail flick we just saw right there from that one. Saying all is okay. Watch that little tail flick happen. She's like, okay, I'm, I'm no, nothing to be worried about here. There it is. So that's a good sign. Now everybody calms down. But here's that high step. And look at her high step. Notice the other big deer looks there. I just zoomed us in. That high stepping, that's an alert. That's an uncomfortable feeling. That means there's a problem. Notice how this deer now has been looking around. If she's high stepping away, this other big doe is looking at her, wondering why and what's going on. This deer starts looking over here. This deer starts looking over this way. And they're trying to figure out what's causing it. Watch. She comes through. She's high-stepping through. What's happening? Why? How come? What's going on? What's the deal? Sniffing the air over here, checking to see what's going on. See how they read off of each other and they, they, they take these cues from each other? Now, remember, my wind's going this way. Pretty soon, if these guys go any farther or something bad it gives me a little kick in the wind, these two are kind of in that danger zone. Oh, Perfect. Turned out sideways. And look it. Perfect shot if I wanted it. Thump. Game over. Problem solved. No deer looking in me to be able I could draw and get away with it without getting busted by anybody. Perfect. You know, same even right there. Everybody looking away except this one here is really looking at this deer and kind of watching what's going on. I could probably still get away with, with making that shot. But watch what happens here in a minute. They're all smelling where I was. Smelling, smelling, smelling. They're they're smelling where I had been standing at. They're not really eating, they're smelling. Notice how now they're looking around, but also watch this one catches a little hint of that wind. And watch the reactions here. Move a little bit. So watch this one catch that little hint of wind. She catches it here. She then starts sniffing to try and find it. Then this one does to try and figure out what's going on. She beads right in on me. She looks right here. Now, she can't see me. I'm wearing the best camo ever made, my gray Columbia jacket and my green pants. So she has no idea I'm there. Um, but she can't see me. 
doesn't know I'm there, but she knows that the scent has got to be coming from this direction. Even though it's really going this way, it might have veered just enough for her to catch an edge of it and not quite know what's going on. But somehow she's figuring something out. This one is figuring it out too. This one's just a little slow to the game being younger, but they're trying to figure out what's going on. This one is still just outside of that range where it's not hitting yet. There it was. There it is. Now this one is starting to perk up too. So that wind is now kind of, but they don't know where I am. But this wind has got them all kind of interested in what's going on here. Okay. They Now they all know that something is not quite right. Now taking a shot at an animal in this situation, like say you wanted to shoot this one, you'd never get away with it. If you even tried to start to draw your bow, you'd be picked off by this one, this one, that one would see you. They'd probably all see you. And before the shot went off, or as soon as you shot the shot, they would all scatter. And if you were aiming here, you might hit there, but this deer would be turned sideways and already running that way before your arrow got there. Never take a shot in this kind of a scenario. You are busted so many different ways. Even if these three deer weren't here, never take a shot when it's in this kind of a scenario. Now I'm going to back this up a touch. Watch how they all kind of focus on my direction. They don't see me and they don't know I'm there, but they're picking at it. So watch. We're going to kind of back it up a little bit. Watch the demeanor of these guys. Do you see that high step from this first one? That stomp, that stomp saying... I, there's something not right. Warning the rest of them. She is letting all of them know with that stomp on the ground that there is a problem here. Watch her. Now they are all alert deer. This one just says, okay, I had enough. I'm just leaving. I, I don't know what's going on, but you know what? I can go find acorn somewhere else. So she's ready to bail. This one's getting ready to figure out what to do too. This one's already up there. She's been feeling that way for a while. She's already, you know, in the position ready to bail in a heartbeat, trying to keep herself safe. Um, she's not comfortable. This one, the one I want, this is the big doe I'm after. She's just a little bit slower to the game. These three are all one unit, and they are well connected, and they're kind of feeding off of each other's cues very well. This one uh, was the late to the game one, but it is the one I'm after, but not quite dialed in as these ones are. Okay, now I got a shot option here. If I wanted it, I could take that shot. Would I be okay? No way. Okay, just as a shoot, don't shoot. But was that angle perfect? Yeah. Oh, God, I'd love that angle right there. Put it right in there, and it's game over, lights out, and you're done. But problem is that that is on that 20-yard trail that is right here, and it's, you know, not quite everybody's alert, but that's that 20-yard trail. Remember, we zoomed in. This is 20 yards right here, and... uh that would be a shot right there too, 22 yards somewhere in there, you know, 24 yards-ish right in here. But, I mean, I got good angle, good angle, good angle. But the problem is looking at me, looking at me, and moving and not quite sure, but everything's all alert here, and I want this deer. So I'm not doing nothing yet. There's a shot right there too, but look, one, two, three, all three of them are looking in my direction, even though that's where I'd want to be. As I started to draw, one of these deer would blow, snort, and they'd all just explode out of there and nothing would ever come of it. So it'd be pointless to even try to draw right now. Not that I want to shoot that one anyway, but I'm just saying, if you think this is a, a shoot scenario, you're way wrong. This is blow up in your face. The second you start to pull on that string and your bow moves, these three would explode out of here and then this one would follow before you even got to half draw. Look at them all scanning, focusing, ears rolling, trying to figure out what's going on. Where's it coming from? What's the deal? Okay, oh, you'd be like, oh, here's that shot again too right there. Look, he turned his head. No, you'd still be busted. Okay, now you might be able to get away with starting to draw, but because of the fact that they're all so alert, all three of them are so alert and scanning and moving so quick, they'd probably nail you again. And before you got that shot off, they would have caught you, busted, and bailed out of there, and you would have not got this shot. But otherwise, 21, 22-yard shot, perfect angle. Can't argue with that right there. But it's, you know, your odds of getting to that point to be able to shoot, pretty slim. And once you did... 
with them looking this way and look at the ears focused right here forward, focused here forward like that. This one's got one this way, one that way. But given the fact that as soon as your sound of your bow went off, these ones would explode. As soon as they exploded, this one would be gone too and most likely before your arrow got there. Again, we're talking a, a distance here. We're zoomed in. This is 20 yards to here. Chances are they'd be gone before your arrow ever made it. But we're not trying to shoot that deer anyway, so we're not worried about it. We want this deer. This is the one we're after. So it's still high stepping, stomping. Okay, but see now look, they're looking escape routes, they're looking for ways out. This one's still trying to figure out what's going on. She doesn't know what to do. She hasn't even moved yet. She's just like, I'm gonna hold still right here till I figure out what I want to do. And then she's going to make up her mind and move. Very similar to how mature bucks act. Okay, rather than a stomping and moving around and trying to fit you, she's just going to stay right there and not do anything stupid until she knows what it is she exactly wants to do or figures out the scenario. She gave a tail flick. She's like, okay, I think I'm just going to bail out of here. Now, Watch, my bow's coming up. Look at, see, now I'm already moving my bow. You're going to see it in a second. But look at, not looking at me, not looking at me, not looking at me, not paying attention to me. Now is the time to get this ready to roll, and I do. Look at, okay, boom, there we go. Up, just like that. These two looking at each other, paying no attention to me, paying no attention to me. She is paying no attention to me either. She's a big one I want. That's my 20-yard trail that she's on right there. Here's what I'm looking for. Look at how perfectly all of this is coming together. Okay, so there's a lot to unpack here and a lot to take in and a lot to think about. But the key things I wanted to point out in here is understanding what deer do, when they do, how they do, um, how they take cues from each other, how they figure things out, their mannerisms, the stomping of a foot, uh, the flick of a tail, the way the ears roll around, the, the fake head bobbing. All of that stuff is present in this one clip. So I wanted to highlight that and bring it to attention so you guys could see that sort of stuff. So uh, to find out what happens, like if I were to hit the play button right now, you got to be part of my Patreon channel because uh, I'm not putting that stuff on YouTube. It is all in my Patreon channel. That's where all my hunting videos go. This is a clip from one of those videos. It is on my Patreon channel. And I'm sorry if that upsets you really bad. Get over it. Don't blame me. Blame YouTube because it's YouTube's algorithms and their rules and things like that that make it this way. Um, but my Patreon channel is where all of that stuff exists now. Uh, and I will put a link to that down below if you want it. But the key thing here, the takeaway is how this whole scenario unfolded, when to move, when not to move, when to draw your bow, when not to draw your bow, what shots work best, what shot angles present themselves, how deer react to things, their mannerisms, all of that is what I wanted you to take away from this. So I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. And uh, like I said, if you want to check out the rest of it, it will be in uh, one of the vlogs in my Patreon channel if you want to. And uh, thanks again. We'll be back with another video soon. All right. Bye.